All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to talk about how Zionists infiltrate the right wing tonight on the report from Tiger Mountain. Stick around and listen. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to talk about how Zionists infiltrate the right wing. Now, what's going on here? This is a very complex issue that involves different layers of ideology and um, dialectics and manipulation. So let's think about this. You'll, you'll have noticed that many uh, right wing pundits in, within Western countries support Israel. Now, um, you know, why is that? Um, you know, I mean, at, at some level, from a right wing perspective, one could almost see why one might support Israel because, um, you know, it, some people consider Israel to be an outpost of Western civilization. I probably uh, don't share that view, but some people do see that. And also, um, some people believe that uh, a nationalist homeland of the Jewish people is a good idea. I'm not entirely opposed to that idea. I don't think the, the land of Palestine is the correct place for that, though. There were many parts of the world where they could have gone. Madagascar was one of them, was the, one of the original ideas. Even some part up in Australia was one of the other ideas they had at one stage. But, um, you know, a homeland for the Jews, I'm not opposed to. I just think where they have decided to place it, which is obviously Palestine, and right in the heart of um, the heartland of essentially one billion Muslims is probably not a good idea even for them. So, you know what I mean? It's a very interesting situation, but you'll notice many right-wing pundits, um, Jordan Peterson is an example, um, you know, uh, uh, many Australian ones, like Andrew Bolt, a pro-Israel. Um, there's always been this thing where uh, many right-wing pundits have support the Zionist Israeli cause. Now, if one of the first questions I'd like to ask all right-wing pundits on this issue is why. Why do you support them? I understand that, again, some people might support it from a nationalist perspective. I can even understand that. But really, what does Israel give back to Western civilization? The main thing it gives is the hatred of a billion Muslims. And um, the Muslims are probably the most radicalized religious people on the planet. There are people who are very deeply into their religion, and there are people that are also closely connected to international ter terrorism. Now, I'm obviously not talking about all Muslim people. There is just a, a part of the Muslim community that is quite radical. I'm not sure how big it is, but it is quite radical and big. And they are committed to kind of, you know, a global jihad idea, right? So, you know, we are sort of like inviting the hatred of these people by siding with Israel. And the West has consistently sided with Israel ever since it was founded. Now, but I don't understand what we get back. I mean, if we, if they had huge oil supplies, if they had huge, I don't know, if they were financing things for us, but no, we give them money and then we fight their wars in the Middle East and we get, as far as I can see, nothing back. Um, except basically we're told, um, you know, uh, what to do. And we're also told we're anti-Semitic if we question the idea. So, you know, um, it, it's very strange. I believe what's going on is it's, it's dialectical, right? Because you've got the globalists um, that are, are a multicultural group of people and they are made up of, you know, a, a lot of different people from around the world. But there is a strong Jewish component of what the globalists are. They're the, they were almost the original um, uh, internationalists. So, and they sort of have almost a left-wing uh, perspective on the world. And then you have the Zionists, who are kind of more right-wing and um, nationalistic in their approach. So what we have is the globalists uh, at, at one level, who are kind of left-wing, um, you know, destroying our countries, inviting in mass immigration. And then you've got the Zionists, who want a very strong nationalistic homeland and ethnostate for the Jewish people. But, you know, they're seen as like two... Op they're seen as opposites, right? I believe they're not opposites at all, that they are the exact same thing, right? That they are two sides of the same coin, so to speak, and actually they work in tandem. But there is a kind of logical um, thing that someone like Andrew Bolt brought up recently, where he said that um, it's very unusual that Jewish people support mass immigration to Western countries, because uh, obviously most, a lot of those are, are, are Muslims, and Muslims who come to our countries potentially put Jewish people at threat in Western countries. Obviously, there is a, still a large diaspora of Jewish people. And that is true. And it is a strange thing. And I've often thought, what is the logic of that? I think it is a Zionist logic because the problem Zionists have with the Muslim world, because the Muslim world, let's, let's not, you know, mince words, they fucking hate them, okay? The Muslim world really hates Israel and is not particularly fond of Jews. Probably even, the, their, their attitude towards them is probably even worse than the Nazis. They are, you know, pretty much dedicated as a people to the eradication of the Israeli state, okay? And they will fight 
this, the Israeli state until the end of time. That's how they feel about it. They're like, you know, if you look at that film June, they're like the Fremen fighting, you know, the Harkonnens. Um, you know, um, it's a fight that will last millennia if necessary. But personally, I don't think they're going to be defeated because there is a billion of them and they are, you know, very hardened fighting people. I know Israel has nuclear weapons, blah, blah, blah. So I think that the logic, which is a strange logic, I'll admit it, is to allow Muslims into Western countries and obviously, from a globalist perspective, it destroys uh, nationalist politics within our own countries. It destroys um, the ethnic homogeneity of our own countries. But it also puts us in a similar position uh, to Israel in the sense that we um, have, a, have a kind of threat from Islam. Obviously, you've seen a recent um, you know, uprisings in, in Ireland. We never used to have a problem with this kind of thing. You know, uh, some children were attacked outside of school by uh, a Muslim immigrant. Um, you know, so I think... It is a Zionist, um, could you call it a plot? I don't know if it's a plot, but it's a strategy that we are in the same boat as them, uh, in, the, in the sense that we are also threatened by, you know, um, you know, uh, um, international, you know, Muslim international terrorism. And obviously, you know, there have been terrorist attacks in Australia. So I think it is very complex what is going on. Um, I think from a right-wing perspective, you don't have to support Israel. I don't think you should necessarily hate the place, though. Um, the place does exist. And that there must be some way um, that Israel can exist in conjunction with the Muslim world. I'm not sure how that can happen. It seems like someone like Donald Trump, with the Abraham Accords, um, was, on, was moving in the right direction. He achieved a great level of peace there. I do believe we do have to consider the Israeli position. Um, you know, and obviously they are an incredible force to be reckoned with. They're armed to the teeth with nuclear weapons, and I, obviously they have a lot of money. Um, so... Uh, you know, this is the situation that we're, we're dealt with. I, I, uh, I, I'm a pragmatist. Um, the, interestingly, there are some um, you know, right-wing pundits in America that are kind of going off plantation in relation to the Israeli issue. Uh, it was generally considered normal, for example, you know, Tucker Carlson, I imagine, was quite pro-Israeli when he was at Fox. Ever since he's left Fox, he's no longer pro-Israeli. And neither is Candace Owens, who obviously works for Ben Shapiro. Ben Shapiro, in a way, is the main... Um, Zionist uh, within, um, you know, for the Daily Wire. He's the main Zionist within right-wing political Melu who wishes to control right-wing discourse in America to keep it pro-Israel. That's almost his function. Um, Candace works for him, so it's very interesting that she's rebelled. And obviously there's a bit of a fight going on there. Obviously in Australia you have um, the freedom movement, which is often connected with right-wing ideas of, you know, national sovereignty and freedom. And you have Avi Yemeni there, who's a, an Israeli uh, who mixes kind of like discourse on the freedom movement, and then he's off in um, you know Israel, um, you know doing doing reports on what's going on in Israel and cheering the troops on as they you know liquidate the Gaza ghetto. So it's really really complex and interesting, and it's something we have to think about, and particularly with Elon Musk bringing this whole issue to the front of you know, global politics. So that's all I want to talk about today. Obviously, I want you to um, you know have a think about it. It's 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 different, um, you know, and it is a complex issue, and we need to really think about it and discuss these issues and not worry about political correctness because i think even if you wanted to help the state of israel you want to sort these problems out um because i do think someone like donald trump can bring peace to the middle east and also peace to um you know what's going on in ukraine um which is also run by a zionist zelensky so anyway that's the report for tiger mountain for this week thank you for listening it's a little bit longer than usual but it's a complex issue so thank you for your time